Our next goal is to display this scene in the Oculus Quest. And to do that, we are, need to make a settings change in the Oculus Quest itself, enable the developer mode, and then enable so-called port forwarding in the Chrome Inspect Devices tab. So you will want to have installed the Oculus Developer Hub. The Oculus Developer Hub is a free tool provided by Oculus to allow your computer to connect to uh, your Oculus Quest device for development purposes. In this case, the link will be down in the video description, but once you set it up and the setup is really easy, you will see your device attached here once the device is connected via USB-C. You can even then later remove the USB-C cable if you select ADB over Wi-Fi here, and that may just make your cable management a little bit easier. Once we have these steps complete, the Oculus Quest and the computer are now connected, and we can now make sure that we can enable the Oculus Quest to access the website on our computer. We do that by setting up so-called port forwarding. You need to type in Chrome Inspect Devices, uh, that is, Chrome colon slash slash inspect hashtag devices. And then you'll get to this tab, which is basically the remote debugging tool from Chrome. This works because the Oculus browser on your Oculus Quest is also based on Chrome. And therefore you can connect with your desktop Chrome with your mobile Chrome on your Oculus Quest. To set up port forwarding, you need to select the port forwarding button here and then make sure to add in AD80, which is the default port for Wonderland engine, and forward that to localhost 8080. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate this with, in this case, 8083. And I have put in localhost 80, in this case, 83, but for your case, 80. Hit enter and then click enable port forwarding in case it's not enabled for you already. Click done, go and switch to the Oculus Quest, open the Oculus browser, and now if you go to localhost 8080, then it will already display the Wonderland engine scene. You will also notice that in Chrome, it now shows the pages open or the tabs open in the Oculus browser. In this case, the climbing game, for example. And you can even go ahead and inspect this tab and you'll see what is going on. I can now go ahead and Enter VR by clicking the VR button. And I see the climbing wall in front of me. And I see the little watch back in the distance. Now I cannot move around yet, but what we can do is we can just keep the VR headset on our head, switch to the Wonderland engine, and then click on the player object in the scene outline on the top left, move out a bit to find the gizmo that is responsible for moving the object, and then just move the object along the x-axis until it's centered in front of the climbing wall. If we now save with Control S, for example, and then package with Control Shift P, or by hitting the package icon at the top, we can then either go out of VR and reload, and check back, which puts us in the correct position. And we can see the watch is now actually kind of too small. Or we go ahead in views, preferences, and disable force full page reloads to allow Wonderland Engine to reload the page without us having the need to exit VR and entering it later again. So this gives us already a nice scene to play with. There's one more optimization I want to do because I know this model, and that is that the textures in this scene are very high. The textures of this climbing wall are more than is necessary. So we're gonna go to the resources tab, go to images, and we see most of these images, which come from wall scene, GLTF, are 1024 by 1024 pixels large, and instead, it's totally sufficient to have them at 512 and 512. So I'm gonna do that for all of these textures, saving a lot on download time. Save the project. It will need to recompress the textures, but this is a lot faster now because the textures are a lot smaller. And after that, we'll notice that the objects basically look unchanged. 
and we can continue implementing our planning game.